Hello guys, in today's video, we're gonna check out the best compact camera for professionals in this year. I made this list based on my personal opinion, and I've tried to list them based on their price, quality, durability, and many more. To find out more information about these compact camera for professionals, you can check out the description below. If you wanna get a best quality compact camera for professionals according to your needs, then watch the video till the end, and then decide to buy. At the first position of our list, we have Fujifilm X10V. This small digital camera is the one that started my craze for fixed lens compacts, and I'm guessing that's true for a lot of photographers out there. As with past iterations of the X10 series, the X10V fixed 23mf-2 makes an excellent travel lens, and thanks to a broad range of improvements, its capabilities put it up there with the Fuji flagship models. In a market saturated with mediocre travel cameras, the Fujifilm X10V truly stands out. For those of you who still haven't heard about this remarkable X-Series camera, let's have a closer look at why it's my pick of the best compact camera in 2022. Image quality straight out of camera on the X10V is actually so good that it's one of the few cameras I'm comfortable to shoot JPEG only. Thanks to the 17 Fuji film simulations, as well as new color chrome and color chrome blue effects, you can create punchy, contrasty images that look like they've been taken on your favorite Fujifilm film stock with a 35mm film camera. The film simulations are all way better than any other small camera systems on the market. Fujifilm's film stock know-how has clearly come into play here with film simulation that's simply unrivaled and a whole lot of fun. Further to this, it drives a love of photography and being able to control every aspect of your photographic experience. The Hybrid Optical Plus Electronic Viewfinder really is unique and a whole lot of fun to use. Being able to adjust the aperture using the lens ring is also a unique feature that will appeal especially to fans of rangefinders. The tactile, silky smooth click click of every knob, dial and button on the Fujifilm X10V add to the whole experience too. I love customizing the rear dial to expose your compensation and leaving the rest of the camera with auto ISO. Auto WB and Aperture Pro already taking care of it all. Moving on to the next at number two with Sony R X10 Roman 7. If you're in a lineup of one of the most popular compact camera series of all time, you have a lot to live up to fortunately. The Sony R X10 Roman 7 doesn't disappoint. I spent a few weeks shooting this powerful little camera for a full Sony R X10 Roman 7 review and have decided to name it the top compact camera of 2022 out of so many other great products on offer. First off, let's get the price out of the way. The Sony RX10 Roman 7, ACA the Sony Cybershot RX10 Roman 7 is definitely an investment. Heck, the latest price here. Despite being expensive, I do actually think it's good value for money. There's just so much packed into its felt, pocketable body, you can actually slip it into the front pocket of your jeans. Top of the list is the incredible zoom lens, a 24-200. Why to telephoto equivalent range that'll leave your jaw on the floor. Check out the image below for what I mean. I also love the fact that LCD displays the optical zoom focal length as you're zooming, so you can set it to 35mm for example, and leave it there if that's your preference when shooting primes. This is what I found myself doing since I rarely shoot at 24 -m. The Sony RX10 Roman 7 offers a tilting touchscreen, albeit a limited one. You're able to touch to change AF points, focus, then shoot is a really handy feature for capturing candid moments, especially when combined with the tilting display. On the VI, the tilt is 90 degrees down and 180 degrees up, making it perfect for vlogging. The Roman 7 also offers fast AF, a new 4K video HDR mode, four-stop image stabilization, Active steady shot for video recording and a larger buffer. 233 VS, the V's already impressive 150. The shot below was one of about 30 in quick succession. My son was actually sprinting along the rope bridge and the RX10 Roman 7 didn't miss a beat with the focus. The number three position is held by Sony RX1R Roman 2. Released back in October 2015, this is one of the few full-frame compact cameras in existence. I once with a 35M sensor. Once with us, as such, it's a camera you can slip into a coat pocket that offers unrivaled image quality, beautifully creamy shallow depth of field, 
Great dynamic range for expanded latitude when post-processing. Great high ISO performance, basically amazing image quality that's superior to 99% of other cameras in its size class. You do pay a pretty price for the Sony RX1 RII, though. Squeezing a big sensor into a small camera body evidently still costs a lot for manufacturers. And due to the nature of the sensor size, the lens needs to be a certain size to accommodate. While small, this isn't a camera for your jeans pocket. You can buy a more feature-rich, versatile, full-frame interchangeable lens camera like the Sony A7 Roman 3 for the price of the RX1 RII and still have some change in your pocket for a new lens, so why would you invest in this one? The Sony RX1 RII doesn't make much sense on paper, nor when you try and explain it to your peers after splurging so much on something when there are many better value options but it's still an endearing camera that will bring you joy every time you pick it up. Not to mention whenever you view the gorgeous high-resolution files on your computer screen. In summary, I'd confidently recommend the Sony RX1 RII to any professional photographer. No matter what brand they usually shoot with, it's a Sony camera like no other Sony camera. Truly unique in the lineup. Next at number 4, we have Canon PowerShot G7X Mark Roman II. The hugely popular Canon PowerShot series attracts many photographers of all standards due mainly to the promise of great image quality. Those fabled Canon colors and useful features trickle down from their pro line, all for an attractive prices, with the Canon PowerShot G7X Mark Roman II. Canon has made a big improvement over the first iteration, with a host of great features, and still managed to keep the price nice and low. Check here if you can still get it under $500. The design remains largely unchanged from its predecessor, with the most notable addition, at least for me, with my large hands and clumsy fingers, is the new grip, which is molded, tactile, and perfectly placed on the front and rear of the body, due to the pocketable dimensions of the Canon G7 X Mark Roman II. The grip is a welcome addition and makes for a comfortable shooting experience, not to mention a lot more security when holding it with one hand for long periods. The LCD screen can now also be articulated downward by a full 45 degrees, allowing you to hold the camera above your head and compose for an interesting viewpoint. The screen still faces the front and does so in one quick and simple action which you can perform with one hand. Face detection does a fine job for the all-important selfie. Overall, I found the G7 X Mark Roman too enjoyable and intuitive to shoot, with the biggest pluses for me being its overall responsiveness and the impressive image quality. It's the kind of camera that packs enough performance to warrant using it over your smartphone, but still retains the dimensions to ensure it's always in your pocket. Here in 2022, we're fortunate to be able to get a great camera for under $500. If you're on a tight budget, this is your answer. The number 5 position is held by Ricoh Griai. I spent a few weeks shooting with the Ricoh Griai and found it a hugely pleasurable experience. My wife fell in love with it too. A few years ago, I tried a previous generation of this camera. I was quite impressed by the image quality coming out of this little compact but the sluggish autofocus annoyed a bit too much to invest in it. The Ricoh Griai Ricoh is much improved and things are much snappier. Speaking of snap, there's a focus option on the Griai and other Ricos called Snap Focus, which basically forces the camera to immediately focus on a specified distance, increasing in 50 km increments from 1 to 5 m, then to infinity. You can set up the camera to snap to the predefined focal distance when you fully press the shutter, as opposed to half pressing it, which would engage the regular focusing. This is one of the features that make the Ricoh Griai so well suited to street photography. Sure, you can zone focus using any camera. But with this one, you essentially have a zone focusing system and a regular autofocusing system in one shutter button. Ingenious! The autofocus isn't the only improvement over the Griai. The Ricoh Griai boosts just about every critical feature. The sensor is now up to 24 MP, the lens much sharper, and now, with macro capabilities, and the battery life is much improved. There's even image stabilization and a touchscreen. The 3-axis sensor stabilization is a welcome addition. In practice, I was able to blur motion without the use of a tripod with shots as slow as 1 slash 2 second. See Kai Wan's video above for an example of how this could be used in the street. It's also not the best at focusing in low light, and the LCD, despite being beautifully sharp, tends to reflect a lot in bright sunlight. Since there's no viewfinder, this can sometimes be annoying. Also, the camera seems to take a split second to render images on the LCD during playback, 
It's barely perceptible at first, but once you see it, it's hard not to notice it again. All in all, though, I'm struggling to find bigger reasons not to love this camera. Trust me, the Ricoh Griot is a truly unique compact that deserves a lot more attention than it's been receiving. It's well worth checking it out. Finally, the number six position is dominated by Leica Q2. Suo, we're reaching the end of the article, and have I really left the best until last? I was in two minds about whether to include the Leica Q2 in this list, not because of its price. We'll come to that in a minute, but because it's not exactly compact in its dimensions. It does, however, have a fixed lens, so let's run with it. First off, some good news if you've got five grand to spare. You'll still have enough change for a cappuccino after purchasing the Leica Q2. Check out the latest price here, you dare. In the image above, when viewed on my 27 monitor, I could zoom in even further than 100% and make out the faces of all the people in the reflection of the sunglasses, with everything remaining sharp. Shot wide open, images have a 3D-like quality, with a razor-sharp focal point which recedes quickly but smoothly to buttery soft bulk. Stop down, the lens continues its reign of tack sharpness. Although it's way too tempting to try and shoot this thing wide open all day long, I found myself taking photos of random objects just to see how amazing they'd look at f 1.7. It even adds 4K video. UHD and Cinefer K recording to its arsenal of features with plenty of frame rate options across 4K and 1080. Macro mode is easily accessed with the firm, twist and satisfying click of the lens ring as is manual mode, which is engaged in a similar way, with focusing aided via peaking and magnification. Every movement on the camera seems meaningful and engaging. It all adds up to a thoroughly enjoyable handling experience. That's all for today. We upload camera and camera accessories review videos every single day. So, don't forget to subscribe and click the bell icon for the upcoming video notification.